welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And today we're talking about a little CD I just came across by chance. It is called Are You Ready? And it is by Blue Rodeo. So Canada has certainly produced its famous contributors to the singer-songwriter genre over the years. There was certainly a golden age in the 1960s with the emergence of artists like Gordon Lightfoot, Leonard Cohen, Buffy St. Marie, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, and the band. But a tier perhaps below that in fame, but still very well known in Canada, where our radio has to play a certain proportion of Canadian musicians, is the band Blue Rodeo. And what I like about Blue Rodeo is their commitment far more often seems to be to making good songs rather than experimenting too much. So on the one hand, the downside is you could listen to a record of theirs and not really remember what you heard because it sounds like a lot of other Blue Rodeo. But the good side is what they do is really good. So you hear it and you tend to be happy with it. So let's talk about the content of this little record here, Are You Ready? So it starts with a track called I Can't Help But Wondering. Uh, this one sets itself apart by a nice upbeat drum intro. So Blue Rodeo as a dual frontman team of Jim Cuddy and Greg Keeler. And basically any song that has a sort of smoother, more ballady feel is sung by Jim Cuddy, whose voice reminds me a little bit of Weird Al, except he doesn't sing Weird Al style songs. But basically what I think they pull off well with this opening track of Can't Help Wondering is you have the beauty of Jim Cuddy's more punny voice, but with a bit of a rock and roll edge thanks to that drum part and it's a song about feeling guilty I guess that your life is going fine but you can't believe you deserve to have it going fine so it's a it's a guilt or a worry for a harm that's not there you know one of the lyrics goes sometimes you wake up screaming all my life I must be dreaming I've been wrong and I'm not strong but I'll be the one that keeps rolling on and it's funny, I, I recently did a review of John Lennon's Imagine, where I talked about nightmares as a, a recurring theme uh, in that one. And now I'm starting to notice, you know, nightmares are a favorite motif of a lot of singer-songwriters. Track number two is Are You Ready? This one is sung by the other frontman, Greg Keeler. And basically this record more or less rotates between Cuddy-led songs and Keeler-led songs. So Keeler has a gruffer voice than Cuddy, uh, and this one is unsurprisingly very bluesy. What's interesting about this song is that it's a really unique mix of that cool of blues and rock with the sensitive tradition of singer-songwriting. The very bluesy song goes, don't worry, buddy, we'll see this thing through. I'll cry the river that carries you through. It's almost like a general is barking orders to you about how you're gonna cut all this manly crap and be sensitive like me, the general. This life we love, you know more what I mean. No more whiskey, no more cigarettes, your last breath, just like a sunset. Track three called Rena, so another Jim Cuddy song. Uh, and this one is named for his wife. And on the one hand, the lyrics are kind of mysterious. So you, it's hard to really tell what they're about, but the way you can tell that it's a good love song, the reason why it resonates is even though they're not specific enough for a listener uh, to know what's going on, they are specific enough for you to tell that something's going on. So an example of a, a verse in there, and I know you got your reasons to stay inside, but nothing ever happens when it's left out on its own. You looked in there with just your wounded pride. Uh, the Blue, Blue Rodeo has lots of night, nice songs named for individual women. I think my favorite Blue Rodeo song is from their 2009 album, All the Things Left Behind, and it's a song called Candace. Another one of their classics from Five Days in July is Cynthia. And all these songs are very specific to the people they're writing about. You know, Jim's not just singing here, oh, Rena, you're so beautiful. I love you. I would do anything to you. No, he's writing a song to a woman he loves, but he's, he's very specific in what he's saying about her or in the character that was inspired by her. Track four, Up on the Cloud. This is kind of a campfire country song, though it has a kvetchy feel, you know, like little complaints. Uh, there's almost a spiritual quality to it as well. It's, it's like it's saying, we appreciate life because of all of its annoyances. The annoyances help show us what we aren't annoyed by. Thank you, December, for your cold gray air. Lakes are frozen, trees are bare. This old world is a bag of tricks, a whole lot of nothing where nothing ever fits. And all her glory, she just don't compare to one single tear in your beautiful eyes. Track number five is I Will. It's another I will do anything for love type song. And once again, we're seeing this theme of the nightmare. I know it's late and I should wait until the morning comes, but I got, but I got a fear that wakes me up and I don't know where that fear comes from. Track number six is Phaedra's Meadow. It's sung by Greg Keeler. It's soft spoken. It has a kind of pirate shanty feel to it. If you're familiar with the Cat Stevens album, Mona Bone Jack on, it sounds like some of the songs that were recorded on there. Melancholy kind of spiritual folk. 
Uh, the lyrics are about jealousy vaguely, and it's referencing a specific Greek myth. So Phaedra was a wife of Theseus. She's not the woman uh, he saved from the Minotaur. It's the younger sister of the woman who he saved from the Minotaur. Theseus has a son. Uh, Phaedra has a crush on Theseus' son. She feels bad about it. On She's somehow exposed, and then she accuses her stepson of wanting to rape her to cover up her inappropriate feelings, and then Theseus ends up killing the son indirectly. So it's a whole complex dark myth about jealousy broadly. But here it's just used to talk about jealousy in a more normal sense, but to give it a kind of spiritual, irrational quality. Track number seven is Runaway Train. This is probably the strongest song on the record. It's an upbeat country tune with Jim Cuddy singing lead, uh, though there's there's a bit of Stevie Wonder in it. Uh, and the they both uh, Jim and Greg sing on the chorus, and that gives it an extra kick that takes it to the lo next level. Theme-wise, again, we're hearing this sort of vague fear that something is ominous, uh, even though the singer is happily in love. She watched him toss and try to sleep, struggle with his demons deep. She thought of all that they'd been through. Track number eight is called Stuck on You. It's about the perpetual instability of love. Uh, it opens with comically modest lyrics, uh, but it, it doesn't really sound comedic if you're not looking at the lyrics on the page. It just sounds mellow. But those lyrics go, I don't know much about love, how it cures and frees the soul, makes you whole and all that other stuff. It sounds more like something someone would say mumbly in a romantic scene in a movie. It's not the kind of lyric one would generally put into a song. Track number nine is called Beverly Street. This is apparently a much older song than the others that the band members somehow forgot about and was discovered when uh, they uncovered a live recording of one of their old concerts where they had sung it. Uh, but it's a song that resonated with me, not so much because of what its sound, but just that it's called Beverly Street and Blue Rodeo are a Toronto band. So I know Beverly Street is a specific street in the downtown of Toronto. Uh, it also particularly connects with me because one of my favorite buildings in Toronto that I had nostalgia for was on Be Beverly Street. And recently a developer knocked it down to build a condo. And I'd written an email to the developer saying, can't you incorporate the old, you know, sandstone colored building into the facade of your new one? But of course they ignored my email. And beyond that, Beverly is in a place in the city where uh, University of Toronto students might rent uh, houses and you might have, you know, five, six, seven students living in a whole house and using all the bedrooms as individual apartments. So I feel like this song is about a nostalgia for that college time of your life for falling in love as a college student and then sort of looking back on the place to try and resurrect those feelings. Now, from track nine, Beverly Street, Toronto, the place I've essentially lived all my life. We go to track 10, Finger Lakes, uh, which is the place I was born. I was born in Ithaca, New York, around the Finger Lakes. So it's funny that Blue Rodeo have a relationship to both these places. Uh, it's another slow country folk tune, invoking again this idea of a nightmare. Apparently, it was inspired in part by Jim Cuddy's relationship to his father. Uh, but if you just looked at the words on a page, you, you would think it's just another song about a romantic relationship. And at first, it seems like it's about an active relationship, and Jim is telling himself it's going to be okay, but then you look at the second and third verse, and suddenly it's in the past tense, and you realize uh, it's, it's not about an active relationship, it's about the ghost of this past relationship, the spirit of the ex providing a sort of false comfort to the singer. Track number 11 is called Tired of Pretending. So I was a bit weirded out by the choices for track 11 and 12, the concluders of this album, because they felt very soft compared to everything else we heard so far. That said, Tired of Pretending at least has an interesting build up to it. There are some horns. It has a sort of cowboy Western drama kind of feel to it. And eventually Keeler's soft voice takes on this really dramatic war cry kind of thing. And track 12, again, we're seeing this nightmare theme and it just felt like a not too different and weirdly mellow way to end the album. It didn't feel like a real concluding track at all, but when I looked at the words on the page, I did think it was an interesting piece of poetry. If some rainy afternoon you're crying in your bed, cursing every detail about the days that we first met, don't, don't get angry about it. Start throwing out everything. Don't get stuck dumb in your eyes each time you hear the doorbell ring. Take some comfort in knowing these are the things that I will do. What's interesting uh, with what's going on here is that you have to like read this passage a couple times before you realize what it's saying, and the singer is just taking comfort in the fact is look, I'm feeling all these sad things. I'm mad that this relationship has ended, but 
look, this was a good relationship. So my partner is feeling all these ways too. So even though we don't have each other anymore, we are alone in some sense, at least we still have this common experience. One of the things that struck me to listening to this Blue Rodeo record, I listened to it just after listening to Rick Astley's Beautiful Life record. In some ways, these are quite different. Blue Rodeo pretty consistently have a kind of country sound to them. Rick Astley sounds quite a lot like modern pop. But lyrically, I noticed this thing where I guess because both of these records largely consists of songs written in the same point in the singer's life, they have weirdly similar themes, which maybe makes the albums a bit too repetitive. That would be the downside to both of them. And also, these are both records written by middle-aged men who, as far as I know, are happy in their relationships. Yet there's such pressure, I think, in the world of music to write most of your songs about love, because that's, I guess, a theme that resonates with everyone. So there's this weird contradiction in a lot of these songs where rather than pining for a love or singing breakup songs, there seems to be this huge underlying anxiety about these seemingly stable relationships. And maybe it's coincidental. Maybe these are anxieties that Jim Cuddy and Greg Keeler share with Rick Astley, or maybe there's something just structural going on where it just doesn't work to be a happy, happily married middle-aged person in the singer songwriting business. I also find the cover art on this record intriguing. So it's a painting by a guy named Rick White, who's done a number of Blue Rodeo covers. You just see this vague country location. I don't know if it's anywhere in upstate New York around the Finger Lakes or something going on. There's always been a bit of a contradiction in the Blue Rodeo identity and that they're a country sounding band. So I guess they're sort of associating themselves with the role here. But at the end of the day, they were founded by two guys who met at a Toronto high school very near to where I live. And J Jim Cuddy on one of his solo albums sings that he has a skyscraper soul. So who are you, Blue, Blue Rodeo? Are you Toronto city people or are you rural Canada people? You have to pick. And finally, maybe no one else has seen this because I haven't seen any commentary on it. When I first saw this record, I thought it was weird because especially the way Blue Rodeo's here, it looks like it's a graphic from an old computer game. But as far as I can tell, there's nothing digital going on with the theme of the record. It was just painted. It wasn't created on a computer, but just a little thing that stood out to me. Let me know if you have any favorite Blue Rodeo so songs, albums. As far as I know, this one doesn't have any of the greatest hits on it, but I can't help wondering and Runaway Train, two great songs on here. Phaedra's Meadow, pretty interesting as well. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.